Hello everybody, this is Jaron from marineandreef.com. Today we're going to do an overview about refugiums. We're going to let you know what is a refugium and why would you want one, what kind of refugium should you choose for your aquarium, and also how to set one up once you pick the refugium you want. To start off, we're going to look at what is a refugium. So a refugium is just what its name suggests, and that's it's a place of refuge. Now, why would you want a place of refuge? Well, simply put, there's a lot of different organisms that can be beneficial to your aquarium that won't survive in the main display tank. This can be things like beneficial copepods or amphipods that just get eaten by the fish. It can be algae that outcompetes the nuisance algae that will again be eaten by the fish. Or it could be bacteria that doesn't have an ideal home in the main display because of the water flow, the amount of light, other conditions that could survive in a different environment. So what we're doing when we're creating a refugium is we're creating a place where these beneficial animals can proliferate to ultimately benefit our main display. If we grow beneficial bacteria in our refugium, it can help filter the water by processing nitrite, nitrate, ammonia, and other things. If we grow algae, it'll outcompete the nuisance algae in the main display and also remove those organic compounds. And if we grow, grow copepods, amphipods, or other small crustaceans, they will break down waste and also serve as a food source as they come out of the refugium back into the tank. And because of all those reasons, it's really nice to have a refugium to provide a beneficial area for those organisms that otherwise couldn't survive in our main tank. Next, we're going to discuss how to add a refugium, the different types of refugiums, and hopefully direct you to which one could work for you. So when you're considering adding a refugium to your tank, there's many different approaches you can take. The first one we'll address is an in-tank refugium. This one is made by CPR. They come in three different sizes, and these refugiums are designed to sit inside your main display tank. Some of the versions have suction cups that will attach to the side. This model comes with a hanging bracket that will hang on the side, and this one also comes with a pump. The pump is going to push water through the refugium. In this case, you would place this in your main display tank, and then from there you could add gravel, you could add live rock, you could add algae. The algae would be protected, any organisms living there would be protected and allowed to proliferate, start breaking down waste that goes into the refugium, and also start absorbing nutrients in the form of algae to outcompete nuisance algae. Now the biggest downside to this type of refugium is that it's in your main display tank and you're going to see it. Now, there's not a lot of people who like having a refugium in their display tank where they can see all the algae and organisms crawling around just kind of detracts from the aesthetic. But keep in mind that these refugiums are great for a variety of other purposes. For example, if you have an aquarium sump that doesn't have a refugium section, hanging one of these in that sump is a great way to add an additional one. And these are also great for a variety of other purposes, such as when you've recently fragged coral, keeping them protected from other things in the tank, making sure they don't blow away. It's a great opportunity to add something like that. Now, if you want to upgrade from your internal refugium, the next step up is probably going to be a hang-on refugium. So if you have a standard aquarium, you don't have a sump on the tank, you want to add a refuge to keep those animals and algae safe that are beneficial, the hang-on refugium will allow you to do that. So this one's also by CPR. CPR makes three different sizes of this, just like they do the internal one. And they simply hang over the edge of your tank with uh, the brackets here and then they include a pump to pump water through the refugium and some of the models also include a light to allow beneficial algae to grow inside that refugium. These are very nice. The biggest disadvantage of these versus some of the other options is you can only make a refugium so big that hangs in the back. If you were to make it really big, it just would weigh too much and put too much stress on the tank. So these are good for small to medium sized tanks, say from 50 to 100 gallons. If you had a smaller tank and you could fit it, like a 30 gallon, it would be an excellent filter for a tank of that size. The next refugium type we're going to discuss is going to be refugiums in all-in-one tanks. And this is things like the Coralite BioCube behind me. While I don't have one here to hold up for you, many of these all-in-one tanks like the BioCube, the Innovative Marine Aquariums, and the Lifeguard Aquariums have a filtration section in the back. And it's very common to turn one of those compartments into a refugium. This simply means removing a lot of the stock media, opening it up, and then typically adding a light later so that you can grow algae or other beneficial organisms in that refugium. 
This is a great option for those of you with those all-in-one tanks because it's discreet, it's hidden away, it takes up no space, you don't have to buy anything extra to hang on the side or insert in, and it can offer some excellent filtration and um, pod population benefits of adding these beneficial organisms to the aquarium. The last kind of refugium we'll discuss is refugiums built into filtration sumps. So if you don't already have a filtration sump and are interested in one, I would definitely consider one with a refugium built in. IceCat makes sumps, uh, their XL 36 inch and 48 inch sumps have refugiums built in and those sumps are going to include a compartment designed for the purpose of being a refugium. This is great for large aquariums because you can have a much larger refugium that you can hang on the back. Most things 100 gallons plus, this is going to be your best option. And it's a great way to keep everything hidden since it's below the tank, you're not going to see anything in the display or anything hanging on the back. It really is the most complete premium option for those considering a high-end install. So once you have your refugium picked out, whether it's internal, it's hang on, it's under the sump, it's in an all-in-one compartment, what do you need to do to start it going? What are you going to need to do in order to get algae growing, to get the pods growing in there, to get those beneficial animals growing and doing what they're supposed to do? Well, the first thing you want to consider is a light. So there's lots of things a refugium can do. Again, it can put beneficial organisms that serve as food, but the vast majority of people who are adding a refugium are doing so for one purpose, and that's to control nutrients. By and large, the most effective way to do that is to grow an algae. The most common kinds of algae grown in refugiums are going to be chatomorpha, or sometimes just called chato algae, and then calerpa, which is a long stringy algae. These algaes will benefit the aquarium by growing in this remote refugium area and essentially outcompeting nuisance algae. So the idea is your aquarium naturally supports some degree of algae. We'd much rather have that algae be out of the display tank where it's not looking ugly and bothering things. So by having the refugium and growing the algae there, we can keep it out of the display. Now in order to keep the algae in the refugium, you got to make sure that the algae prefers to live in the refugium versus the tank. In other words, if the conditions for the algae are better in the tank than the refugium, they're going to grow in the tank because it's easier for them to grow there. So the two ways we can make sure that the conditions are better in the refugium are first off by adding a very bright intense light. In general, if you are going to try to get the algae to favor the refugium over the main tank, the light needs to be at least as bright, if not brighter, than your main display tank. And that's because if it's not brighter, the algae is still going to grow better in your main display tank. Because of this, a lot of high-powered, very efficient refugium lights have become popular. Uh, the first one I'll show is this Tunzi Eco Chic refugium light. This light has a few really cool things. First off, it's waterproof. So if you have a refugium in the back of an all-in-one tank and you're wondering how to get light there, this is completely submersible so you can drop it in, keep it underwater, it's not going to hurt anything. If you have a hang-on refugium like the CPR, the magnet mount allows it to sit in the refugium itself and work very well for this. And if you had a smaller in sump refugium, it could possibly also work, though we'll discuss some other lights later that are likely better for that scenario. Another thing unique about this light is compared to our main lights, this light is specifically designed to grow algae. So if you look at the color temperature of this refugium light versus your reef lights, there's a lot more red, there's a lot more purple and blue, and that's because that's the color that algae really prefers to grow in. So we're able to get the algae to grow in the refugium versus the display, partially just because this is a very bright light, but partially also because it's putting out the ideal spectrum for that algae. So regardless of which kind of refugium you choose, you want to pick a good light. EcoChic is great for smaller refugiums, it, ones in the back of all-in-one tanks or hang-ons. If you have a large refugium, you're going to want something more powerful than that EcoChic, and that's what leads us to these Kessel horticulture lights. Now this one I have here is a Kessel, Kessel H160. This is what I would recommend for most people with aquariums um, between 1 and 200 gallons. There is a smaller H80 Kessel. That's what I would recommend for aquariums 100 gallons and lower. These are really great because they're significantly higher output than a uh, light like the EcoChic and they also have the same ideal color temperature for that algae, where they're going to be putting out lots of red, blue, and purple to grow the algae very well. Again, because if that refugium is better for growth than the display tank, the algae is going to grow there versus the display, and you'll have an algae-free display.
The next thing to consider when trying to grow algae in your refugium is once you start growing a lot of algae for filtration purposes, one thing many people experience is sometimes that algae mysteriously all dies. And the main reason for this is not because there is a lack of organic nutrients, such as what's caused by fish poop, nitrates, phosphates, but it's inorganic elements. And if you're growing a ton of algae, it can be very important to add those back. So the first way we'll discuss as far as adding those back is through this Brightwell Chato Grow. Now this is a product specifically designed to help grow chato algae, though it works with calerpa algae as well. And it's gonna add iron, molybdenum, cobalt, lots of those minor elements that the algae uses a lot more of than the fish and corals in our tank. And once we start growing a lot of that algae for filtration, sometimes it can be completely stripped out. With a product like this Chato Grow, you may wanna add it weekly to once a month, depending on how much algae you're growing. That'll help make sure it doesn't randomly crash once it's sucked out all the important trace elements and that it keeps on growing in your tank. You don't wind up with algae in the display. Another option in comparison to the Chato Grow is gonna be this Ecosystem Miracle Mud. Now, there's a difference in how these products function, but they're essentially doing the same thing. So with the Ecosystem's Miracle Mud, it includes a lot of those same minerals, the iron, cobalt, magnesium, molybdenum, manganese, that a lot of the algae use much more than the organisms in our tank. With the Miracle Mud, you're simply gonna place the mud at the bottom of your refugia, whether it be a hang-on one, an in-tank one, or an in-sump one, and then it's gonna slowly release those elements. The advantage of this is that you're not gonna have to weekly or once a month add that liquid to the aquarium, it's passively going in. The disadvantage is this does not have an unlimited amount of those nutrients. So it's recommended by ecosystems that after the first two years, you replace half the mud. So if you'd rather not have those regular additions and say in two years, I'm gonna suck half the mud up, put new mud in, this could be a better option for you. If you're saying, man, sucking that mud out, even though it's two years down the road, sounds like a lot of work, the Chato Grow can be a good option to make sure that algae continues to grow. If you have any more questions about refugiums, how to set them up, which lights to pick, which supplements to help your algae grow and control the nutrients in your aquarium, please feel free to reach the videos and education section at marinareef.com. There will be a written version of this article that you can read there, as well as other educational videos about all aquarium topics.